Welcome back. It is Wednesday, January 31st in the NBA. My four best bets are on the way, including a two-unit play. But first, we have a special guest today, and boy, oh boy, it's long overdue. It is here. The Broom, a 3-0 sweep yesterday, and boy, did we need it in the worst way. Let's talk about it, do a victory lap, and then dive into today's picks. Pascal Siakam, wonderful work, over 18 and a half points. Dante DiVincenzo, the big ragu. Anyone doubted the man? He scrapped up like 33 points. He had 19 in the first half. We appreciate you. Then Jalen Brown took us home. Only got 33 PRAs, but he certainly will take it a 3-0 sweep of the day. But the biggest part is we need to continue that momentum today to end out January. Let's dive into the picks, though, today. We got four of them incoming. But before we dive into that, a big news yesterday dropped. Bet365 is now in Indiana. I always talk about Bet365. They sometimes have the best odds for a ton of different props, especially if you're doing like alt lines and things like that. Bet365 is the place to be. So if you are in Indiana, congrats. You now have it. And they have a great offer. You bet $5, you get $150 in bonus bets. One of our picks later on in the video was on Bet365. I'm just saying, if you're in Indiana, you need to take advantage of it. I love Bet365, one of my favorite books out there. It's also available in New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Kentucky, Colorado, and Iowa. So you definitely take advantage. You get the same exact offer if you're in any of those states but welcome to the club indiana but let's dive into the picks though today we're going to start with the two unit play the guy that's on my shirt and his return home to portland damian lillard give me his over 31 and a half points plus assists a two unit play of the day now you know, typically we've been doing one and a half unit plays those are cursed when we've gone to two units we've actually done really well this season maybe i'm a little superstitious but i really like this matchup for damian lillard not only is it a return home to portland which we'll talk about in a second but obviously this is a terrific spot to back dame now if you look at dame if you had to just pick an individual line it would just be his points but that is creepily that's going up 25 and a half 26 and a half i think there's a chance dame could go out there and get you know 23 points and 10 assists this is that good of a matchup for him to get assist to now look at damian lillard makes his long awaited return to portland obviously we know that's where dame kind of not didn't necessarily grow up but he did grow up as and became a man that's where he played for the longest time playing with the the portland trailblazers and now he's returning back home to face them this is going to be a motivational spot for dame lillard to show up and there's gonna be tons of fans out there they're gonna do a tribute video i'm sure and lillard if you look at his numbers on the season he's averaging 25.1 points per game and 6.8 assists per game good for 31.9 points plus assists we basically need an average game and dame probably goes over this line he's over in 24 of, of 44 games 55 now, you've seen in the last few games, Lillard's been very up and down. In the last two, he's had 35 and then 23 points plus assists, only 14 and 13 field goal attempts. He has averaged, though, 13 potential assists. Now, Doc Rivers, obviously their new head coach, he changed up the rotations a little bit last game, but the 13 and 14 field goal attempts, very low for him. And last game, I can't really blame him, had a terrible matchup against Contavious Caldwell Pope, one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. The Blazers don't really have that. They don't have an elite perimeter defender. Probably Matisse Thibel, if you want to consider him, he will come off the bench, but I'm not concerned about Matisse Thibel at all. Dame's going to go out there, and I think he's going to be firing up a ton of shots for the fans. And we've seen, like I said, a terrific matchup for him. Over the last 15 games, the Blazers have allowed the fourth most points per game and the sixth most assists per game to point guards. They don't have a great perimeter guard defender, and I think that we'll see Dame be able to get to his spots, get to the free throw line, and do his thing. And I don't necessarily know what his rotations will be like tonight. Doc Rivers is going to consistently kind of rotate them, switch them around. I think Dame's going to be aggressive this season. I think he's going to be shooting a ton of shots. And I wouldn't be surprised if Giannis is like, you know what? Dame, go do your thing. We'll give it to you. This is your obviously a big game for him. Obviously means a lot more to Damian Lillard than it probably does all his other teammates. So I don't think Lillard's going to be firing it up in this season when he's attempted 18 or more shots, which is his elite, his season average. He has gone over this line in 18 of 22 games, 82%. And like I said, in his first game versus Portland, that was in Milwaukee, 31 points, four assists. Didn't even shoot well. Shot seven for 21. Still cleared this line. Two unit play for a reason. Dame, not only will he be motivated, I'm sure, to fire up a ton of shots and play well for the for his old home crowd. Also, this is a great spot. Great matchup for him. I really think he's firing up a ton of shots. If the Blazers want to throw some double teams at him for fun, just to kind of mess with him, we obviously have the assists in there, too. I really like Dame Lillard back at home, taking on the Portland Trail Blazers. Give me his over 31 and a half points plus assists. I know it's square. We'll throw two units on it. My best bet of the day. Now, the last three picks are all going to be one unit plays. We're going to dive into these, these three, and we're going to start with an under. Spooky, but, you know, we've done decently on under so far in 2024. Let's hopefully cash another one. Miles Bridges. I like his under 39 and a half points, rebounds, and assists, minus 115 on FanDuel. I would also play this at 20 or 38 and a half. 20, 39 and a half, I think, is obviously the better number, but 38 and a half is fine, too. If you need an individual line, points is the way to go here. Now, it is worth noting, as I record this, LaMelo Ball is doubtful to play. In the NBA, no one is officially out until that tip-off comes in. So if LaMelo Ball wants to just randomly go from doubtful to questionable, 
I wouldn't, I would allow it because that would probably lower Bridges line by like four or five PRAs. But even if he doesn't want to return, I still like this matchup from Bridges to go under. I just rather take the PRAs instead of the points, which I'll talk about why. Now, last game, LaMelo Ball did miss that one. Bridges, 21 points, shot 10 for 20 from the field, 10 rebounds, five assists, had 36 PRAs, played 40 minutes. Now he did have 22 rebounds plus assist chances, converted them at a 68% clip. His normal season average has been about 58%. Now, that was a tough matchup against the Knicks. Not going to get a much easier matchup here against the Bulls. In three games for Chicago this season, Bridges has had 26, 35, and 37 PRAs. It's not like, I mean, sure, he's played with Terry Rozier in some of those games, which is a good point guard that can get him open, more open shots. But he's also played 40 minutes in all three, attempted 15 or more shots in all three. Tech attempted 18 shots in two of them. And the games he actually played, he played pretty well. Shot 47, 67, and 50%. If Bridges goes out here and shoots poorly, he's soaring under this line. But I just think in all those games, Bridges was able to play off ball. He had a point guard on the floor, someone that was able to create shots for him. And if you're going to beat the Bulls, how you beat them is catching and shooting. That's kind of how they're, they get destroyed by the three-point line. It's not really Bridges' forte is catch and shoot threes. He, you know, gets some here and there, but I feel like that's more of a, a P.J. Washington type or Brandon Miller type game. Where, whereas you look at this season, the Bulls, like I said, they're very tough against guys that want to drive to the paint, allow the fewest points per game in the paint. Bridges, like I said, not known for being a huge three-point shooter. His four plus threes made plus 250 this season when he's made three or less threes. He's under this line in 28 of 30 games. And I think P.J. Washington is in a really good spot here. I think P.J., who's obviously in the starting lineup, will take some usage away. So will Brandon Miller. Those guys are catch and shoot guys. I just don't like Bridges' line. Obviously, he's going to play a lot of minutes, but there's just way too many ways for him to go under this. If Bridges does not shoot the ball well, he's soaring under. It won't matter how many rebounds or assists he gets. But also, he just doesn't grab a ton of rebounds because he's probably going to have to guard DeMar DeRozan or someone like that or a guard, or he just doesn't get the assists. It's going to be tough for him to get it done. So I think this line's a tad too high. Sure, you could say the Bulls are on a back-to-back, -back, but they lost last yesterday, so they are going to come in here obviously trying to win this game. So I really do want to fade Bridges. I'll take his under 39.5 points, rebounds, and assists. Points is the individual line I would go with at 25.5, but like I said, there's a chance he could score 28 points and just grab six rebounds, get four assists, and still stay under this line. So I'd rather do the PRAs if he wants to go and somehow get a triple-double, whatever, but I really don't think he has a big day on the rebounds in the assists portion. Now, let's move on to my third pick of the day. I'm actually going to go back to a game we already talked about. This guy we have taken a good amount this season. It hasn't played a ton of games because he's been injured a little bit, but it is Anthony Simons, over 22.5 points, minus 120 on Fando. I would take this at 23.5. If it does bump up to 23.5, take a peek at his points plus assist line. It was about 28.5. I like that more than the 23.5 line, but I really like Simons tonight. Now, obviously, his old running mate, Damian Lillard, coming back into town. I'm not really factoring that in here. It is a matchup against the Bucs. And as we always say, you take your guards against the Bucs. And you've seen Anthony actually on a two-game downturn. Let's talk about it. His last four games, had two really good games, 33 and 40 points. Last two, 11 and 15 points. Now, the 11 came against Chicago. Terrific guard defense, defensive team, shot four for 15. I can excuse that one. Very tough matchup. Then he faced the Sixers. He got two fouls in the first four minutes, was benched for the next, you know, eight minutes of the first quarter, which is typically when he gets going. Only played 28 minutes. They smoked the Sixers. Today, he gets a prime bounce back spot against the Bucs. As we always say, take your guards against the Bucs. Why is that? Because the Bucs are allowing the third most points per game to point guards this season and the fifth most points per game to point guards over the last 15 games. They just have not been good. And for these last three against them, 31, 29, and 21 points. The 21 was the only game in those three that Damian Lillard was active in. The other games, he was not active. And so Anthony was the number one option. Last game, like I said, Anthony really didn't need to score. He had 15 points of what he shoot like 12 times because Jeremy Grant had 27, Brogdon had 24, Scoot Anderson off the bench had 22, eight and even at 18. He didn't need to do anything. They smoked the Sixers. In this game, I really think this is the matchup Anthony Simons has to be aggressive in because the Bucs are going to put up points on the other side. They're going to need to go fast and score points. And think about who, who's going to be guarding who. Jeremy Grant likely gets Giannis on him. Good luck with that. Aiton's going to get Brooke Lopez, and they could both get into foul trouble. And then I, either way, I just maybe Anthony Simons gets Damian Lillard. Maybe he gets Malik Beasley. Either way, I'm not scared of either of those two guys. We look at Anthony's three-point prop set to three and a half. Him to make three threes is minus 250. This season, he's over this line in 10 of 13 games when he's made three or more threes. And he's over in all four home games with three or more threes, scoring 30, 
41, 29, and 28 points. I think this is a great buy low spot for Anthony Simons. We were used to seeing his points line in the 25 and a half, 26 and a half point range. Obviously, a couple bad games will do that, but I also don't think he has to guard anyone on def defense. He probably won't get the Damian Lillard shadow. That'll probably be Brogdon's job. And so I think Simons will be able to just hang out in the corner, guard Malik Beasley, chill there, and hopefully use all of his, his energy on offense. I really like this spot, though. They're nine point underdogs. It could be a lot. Sure, and we'll probably take an L on Damian Lillard unless he's the one doing the blowing out. But I really think this is a close game. Blazers have been really good at home. Give me Simons over 22 and a half points. My second pick in that game, third pick overall, fourth and final pick of the day. I won't add any plays today, just four picks, including that two unit play. Another under, and this one is scary. This is the, it is taking an under on one of the best players in the NBA. It is Kawhi Leonard. I like his under 27 and a half points, minus 120. On Bet365. Speaking of Bet365, if you want to sign up, if you're in Indiana or in any of those other states in the description, definitely sign up and get the $150 in bonus bets. Just sign up using the details down below. Let's talk about Kawhi Leonard. Why am I fading him tonight? I take this a 26 and a half. Now, outside of Avika Zubac, the Clippers are more or less pretty healthy. Every single person is out there and is expected to play. In 34 games this season with Paul George and James Harden active, both scheduled to play, Kawhi. 23.6 points per game. He's under this line in 24 of 34 games with PG and James Harden. That's 71% of the time. Now, let's talk about Kawhi and the Clippers. They are on the road taking on the Wizards. Now, yes, I know the Wizards suck. They are really bad. There's a reason this game has a 12 or 13 point spread. And the Wizards don't really play a lot of defense. Sure. In that sense, I can understand Kawhi Leonard could score 28 points against the Wizards. It's not saying a big, a big task. However, the Wizards probably only have one who I would say good above average defender, that's probably going to be Denny of Dia, and he's going to go out there and guard Kawhi Leonard. Now, I look at this matchup in a sense of, I think Kawhi has a good game, he can be efficient. I just think 27 and a half, tad too high for Kawhi. And you look at the last game, obviously they lost to the Clippers, or not the Clippers, to Cleveland Cavaliers by 10. Kawhi, big game, 30 points on 25 field goal attempts. 25 shots, a lot for Kawhi Leonard. Why? Because James Harden did nothing. He had 11 points, 8 field goal attempts. And Paul George did nothing too. He had 13 points on 11 field goal attempts. He was 0 for 5 from 3. He played about 30 minutes. Sure, I can understand why Kawhi Leonard was like, all right, well, I guess I got to shoot every shot. And he still barely went over this line. Now, obviously, the Cavaliers are a much better defensive team than the Wizards. But I still think this is a game where Kawhi doesn't need to be this aggressive and drop 20-plus field goal attempts. I think this is a game where Paul George could get going. James Harden could get going. Heck, they could even have Norm Powell or Russell Westbrook get going off the bench. I think this is a game they kind of play a large rotation because they should be able to beat the Wizards without having to use Kawhi Leonard for 37 minutes. And we've seen this season when Kawhi attempts 20 or less shots, he's under this line in 24 of 31 games. I just think there's too many ways for Kawhi to go under. If this line was 25 and a half, I'm not taking it. But 27 and a half, I think is a bucket a little bit too high. This is just, there's too many ways out. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard, if he shoots poorly, he's going under. I don't anticipate him to shoot poorly. He's like a robot, but I still, if he shoots poorly, he's going under. Number two, if this is a blowout, probably goes under because it's a 12, 13 point spread. Boom, he could go under. Number three, if Paul George or James Harden has it going, very hard chance for Kawhi Leonard to also put up 28 points while either of them is going. So I think there's too many ways out here for Kawhi Leonard. Obviously, I know he's really good. I just think this line is, like I said, a bucket too high. I think it should be about 24 and a half, 25 and a half, which is what it had been. But that 30 point outlier game against the Cavaliers, obviously bumped up his line a little bit too high, in my opinion. Sure, he could score 20, 28 against the Wizards. And I wouldn't say, oh, wow, he, he had a big game against the Wizards. No, he could do that. But I just think this line's a tad high. Don't necessarily know if Kawhi has to try as hard in this one. Probably he def defers a little bit more towards his teammates, get them going, as they obviously have more. They don't play tomorrow either. So I'm not really worried here. Kawhi Leonard, give me his under 27 and a half points. My fourth and final pick of the day. Let's bring out this broom. Once again, we have Kawhi's under in points. We have our two unit play, Damian Lillard's over in points plus assists, Anthony Simons over in points, and Miles Bridges under in PRAs. That's a four pick card. Let's go 4 0 and dominate. Bring out the broom once again. I should have a new second channel video live today. I will link that on the screen when it is live. It was a time in Minnesota watching a Timberwolves game who actually played against the Clippers, and I got to watch James Harden uh, absolutely wreck me. But it's been a great day. Let's have it bring out the brooms once again. Let's start this hot streak going. I'll see you guys back in the next one in February. See you then. Peace.